Welcome to a video that I like to call the deep dive video. The name of this video might be a little bit misleading. The way I look at it is I do videos every day. I also do a weekly video and an intermarket analysis video. What I do after I'm done with all of those is I look through all of the daily charts and then I put together this last video that goes through the charts that I didn't use in the previous week's daily videos. Some of these I might have shown once or twice. Others might have been at the beginning of the week and then they've fallen off. There are some charts that I'm not showing this time because I have been using them in the daily video updates. This is being prepared for Monday, July 3rd. The first chart is a VIX to the three month average of the VIX ratio. And we're seeing that the indicator itself is going down and the red line is also going down. This is confirming what we're seeing in the VIX and that there's not a lot of fear in the market right now. Also, I have a VIX and then on the bottom I have an RSI of the VIX. We look for extreme positive or negative readings and we're not getting any of those right now so I didn't include this chart. We also have a one day version of the equity put call ratio and for some reason this is the very last chart to update every day and sometimes it's not even updated when I'm getting ready to record a video. On Friday we did see a little bit of a dip down because we had a solid update on Friday. This is a five period simple moving average of the equity put call ratio and it's also been declining. The version that I use in the daily videos is a longer term view of this same chart where I also have some key levels marked off that we look to trigger signals. Then just to keep track of where we're at, we are down 7.64% from the all time high. Right here is the beginning of 2022 when we established the high on January 4th and then over on this side is where we're at currently. I also have been watching the 4000 level. It seems like we've been bouncing up and down and up and down above and below it. Since we're quite a ways away from that level now, I have not been showing this chart. This is the SKU index, which kind of goes hand in hand with the VIX. The VIX measures S&P 500 options that are at the money. The SKU index looks at out of the money options, either above or below current price. When we get up into this red area, the market is expecting some kind of a big move. It's kind of a roll of the dice as to what that move will be. Sometimes the market kept going in the same direction. Other times it marked a top, other times it marked a bottom. We just kind of have to look inside the context at any given time to see what this is telling us. We had been getting an extreme positive reading and now we're dropping back down to a more normal reading. We also look at the VIX to the volatility of the VIX ratio, showing that we are declining overall, suggesting that there's not a lot of fear in the market. If you look at the ratio, it did tick up slightly. The VIX was up slightly in Friday's session and volatility is falling back. We also look at the VIX to move ratio, showing that there's not a lot of fear in the market. And I have used this chart a few times over the past week. Technical alerts. These come from stockcharts.com. They are put out every day. This is just for Friday. We read these from the bottom up. The TSX was above 20,000. That's Canada. And when they're blue like this, that means they're positive. We had a really solid up move on Friday. So all of these are positive signals. They can look at indexes. They can look at sectors. They can look at different things that happen inside of the market. Then what we do is we look at five main indexes. The Dow, the S&P, the QQQs, which is the NASDAQ 100, the mid caps and the small caps, and then we can rank them on a score of 0 to 100. This is also done by stockcharts.com. And then I just show you the list starting from the best down to the worst. Coming in first place are the QQQs, which is based on the NASDAQ 100. It's now giving us a score of 97.5. In second place is the S&P 500 at 87.2. In third place are the mid caps at 71.9. In fourth place are the small caps at 63.8. And in last place is the Dow at 52.6. Now the fact that all of these are above 50 is positive, but we want to have scores in the 80 to 90 range to really suggest that technically the charts are looking quite strong. I don't have any short term charts to show you now because we were jockeying around so much I used all of those charts. But I do look at the fundamentals where we're looking at the earnings where they've been flattening out overall. Now this is looking backwards. We also keep a historical look at the P.E. ratio, which is quite high currently at 25.76. And we're looking at the yield on the S&P 500, which is kind of low at 1.53.
Intermediate term charts. The CMB composite, it's going back up and showing some improvement. This is a standalone trading system, but I don't use it like that. I use the CMB composite more like an oscillator looking for an extreme positive or negative reading. And even some of those are not all that accurate. We also look at the Connors RSI, which is like a regular RSI looking for an extreme positive or negative reading. We're above the midpoint and advancing, so that's positive, but we're not above this upper black line. Looking at the 50 period moving average study, this is both a simple and exponential moving average. Price is far away from these moving averages right now, so I saw no need to include that in the video. And the same thing is true with the 100 period moving average study. Then we look at the intermediate term rainbow chart. I have been using the short term rainbow chart in the videos. The intermediate term chart goes from 50 periods up to 100 and we're a ways away from all of the moving averages. So it's not really telling us all that much. We can see to watch how this rainbow changes shape. The more that we go up, the more flattened out this will become. We also keep an eye on the 50 day cycle over the last year or so. This seems to have been a pretty good indicator of when things might shift. Sometimes though it marks a bottom, other times we just kept going in that same general direction and other times it marked a top. The last time we had a signal was on May 19th. The next signal will be coming on August 1st. I did show this chart a few times. This is a 20 period simple moving average of the open, high, low and close. We came down to the high and bounced off of that, so this was acting somewhat as support. We also look at an anchored moving average going back to the all-time high. We're quite a ways above that, so I haven't been showing this. We also keep an eye on how far away are we above or below the 200-day simple moving average. And then the mass index is not generating a signal right now. We only pay attention to this when we start dealing with the dashed red line and the blue line. This chart shows two things. It's equivolume on the top. When the bars are green, that's positive. When they're red, that's negative. And the thicker the candle is, the more volume went into that particular move. On the bottom, we have the ease of movement indicator, which tries to distinguish the path of least resistance. Since we're above zero and climbing, the path would be to the upside. This is a chart that I keep talking about in the daily video, but I haven't been showing it. This is a trend channel where I started off by looking at the two lows that were set back in 2022. I drew a trend line then to match those up. Then what I did is I drew a parallel line going back to the all-time high that was set in early 2022. And as we were going up, it looked like this area was going to provide overhead resistance. And it did a couple of times. We hit it a few times and bounced back, but then we ended up breaking through and now we're far away from this trend line, so I haven't been showing it. If we start to fall and come back down to this line, then I'll start to show this chart again. We also look at the Ichimoku cloud, which I sometimes call the Itchy and Scratchy cloud. We're far above it right now. When we're above it and declining, this will act as support sometimes. When we're below it and going up, it may act as resistance. The Bollinger Bands, we're getting near the upper Bollinger Band right now, but it's not necessarily extreme. As we see in the next chart, this is the percent B indicator. How far away are we from the upper or lower band? We're not quite extreme positive yet. The Copic curve, which we had been showing for quite a while, is now crossed below the red line. So the signal is now gone. Some long-term charts. Here's the long-term rainbow going from 50 periods up to 250 periods. We're a ways away from all of the moving averages and these are also smoothing out. The two-year treasury yield. Sometimes this gives us a possible positive scenario, especially when the two-year yield spikes up and then goes down. Sometimes that'll help the S&P go up. But the two-year yield and the S&P have had a real strong correlated relationship of going in the same direction. So as the S&P has been going up, we're seeing the two-year yield going up as well. So it's really not giving us any insight. Some broad market measures. This is the Vixen, which is the VIX for the NASDAQ 100, also suggesting that there's not a lot of fear in the market. Then we compare the S&P 100 with the S&P 500, and they're moving more in lockstep now, where earlier in the year we saw the S&P moving up where the S&P 500 was going sideways. We keep an eye on the microcap index. We're above 100 and going up, and if we keep going up, we might see a golden cross with this ratio. We also keep an eye on the all-time high from the QQQs. This is a weekly chart going back to that all-time high. 
and we're well above this anchored moving average, so I haven't been showing it. Then I show this off and on. We're keeping an eye on the financial sector because we're above what could be considered support going all the way back to 2007. It acted as resistance in 2019. Well, we went above that, came back down, and this level so far has been holding. Then this is a newer chart. This is a weekly version of the S&P 500 on top. And this is the German DAX weekly on the bottom. And we just show that there's a pretty strong correlation between the two. Some rated change charts. I have been talking about a 200 period rated change chart, but this is 250 periods showing how we are seeing some improvement in longer term price. Here's a longer term version of that same chart also showing some improvement. Keeping an eye on bonds, the red line is the euro dollar, which are dollars outside of the U.S. The green line is the two-year yield. The red line acts as a good proxy for the Fed funds rate. Then we also keep an eye on the yield curves. I mention those in every video, but I don't show this chart very often. All of the yield curves that we watch remain inverted, meaning that we're below this red line on each one. Then we keep an eye on the one-month yield to the three-month yield. The way it should be is the red line should be on top because it's further out, so you should get a higher rate. The blue line should be on bottom because you get a lower rate. We were going kind of crazy right around the time of the debt ceiling issue, but now it's started to go back to normal. Then this is a chart, and I'm not quite sure what to make of this. On top is the S&P 500, and it's comparing it to the long-term bond ETF. There tends to be a longer term correlation between these two, but we're seeing that really fall apart right now, and we're even seeing that on a shorter term basis. We're also showing that the spread between the two is quite high. During other times, they tend to move in the same general direction, and they tend to not get too far apart from each other. Now they're just going in opposite directions. Maybe it's a legal separation of some kind. Then this is also a newer chart on the top. We have the 10-year yield in the U.S., and we subtract the German Bund 10-year yield, and that gives us a chart with some support levels here. And then we can compare that to the U.S. dollar index. There tends to be a really high correlation between the two. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. Please feel free to check out the other videos that I post. I want to wish everybody a very happy Independence Day, and I will talk to you in the next video.